In this segment, we'll be talking about functions, and in the classroom, you learn a rather elaborate definition for functions, but mainly we're going to talk about function notation. We'll kind of get to the, the meaning of definition as we go through this, but the, the notation is this. It's f of x is equal to 2x minus 3, for example. Now, this function notation can come directly from an equation like y equals 2x minus 3. And in fact, these are interchangeable ideas. Now, the function notation is often used in a circumstance like this. If f of x is equal to this expression, then f of 5 means in the f function replace x with 5 and evaluate. Now, that's very important because I can get, almost guarantee you that on the test there's going to be a, a function that's given and then you'll be asked to evaluate f of something. You see, and all you do is replace this something in place of the variable x. So replace x with 5 and evaluate, we find that f of 5 then is 7. Now that replacement needs to be a blind replacement. That is, you don't care what's in parenthesis right here. You're just going to replace the variable with whatever is there. It could be a picture of a heart or a tree or whatever. It doesn't matter. Now in this circumstance, it's, a, it's y minus 2. f of y minus 2 means in the f function, replace x with y minus 2. So here's the f function. Take a look at it. Here's the f function. We're going to replace this x with y minus 2. So write 2 times y minus 2 minus 3. Now that's what we have here. 2 times y minus 2 minus 3. And then evaluate. So 2 times these terms gives us all of this. And collecting like terms, we get 2y minus 7. So that's, that's all there is to it. That's what function notation is all about. Now, graphically, functions have a, a particular kind of appearance, and, it, and this kind of goes back to the definition of function. This is the graph of a function because every value of x has only one y partner. That is, well, for this value of x, we have a one y partner that puts a point on the graph. For this value of x, we have one y partner that puts a point on the graph. And it's for this reason that we can test for functions by doing what's called a vertical line test. If every vertical line you can imagine will intersect the graph only one time, then you have a function. If it intersects more than one time, then you don't have a function. This is an example of a non-function relationship between x and y. And it's not a function because for one value of x, there would be more than one value of y that puts a point on the graph. Now, the algebraic form that is not functional would be something like this. If we had something like y squared equals x plus 2, let's say. You see, this, this doesn't represent, the graph of this doesn't represent the graph of a function because it's a parabolic curve opening sideways. And it would, therefore, a vertical line test would fail. But, but uh, from the uh, strictly algebraic standpoint, if, if y squared is x plus 2, then I can choose one value of x. And let me just choose one, 7. You see, if x is 7, then y squared is 7 plus 2, or 9. And so y squared is 9 means that what, for what values of y can this be true? Well, y could either be 3 or negative 3 to square and give 9. So when x equals 7, y equals plus or minus 3. You see, so one value of x is, is corresponding with two values of y. And for the function idea to take place, a single value of x is related to only one value for y. All right. But I, I don't think you're going to get that deep into the situation. Now, this vertical line test idea might be worthwhile. Domain and range, it's a, a separate topic related to the notion of function. Now, <clears throat> domain and range are easy to identify when you're looking at a graph. A little more difficult to identify when looking at the algebraic form. We're going to look at both of them here just as a review. But domain basically means the acceptable replacements for x when you're looking at an algebraic form. But when you're looking at a graph, it is for what values of x do we have points on the graph? You see, the x values, the domain, would be from this x all the way out to an x over here. You see, so for, for an x of negative 1, we have a point on the graph. For an x of 0, a point on the graph. For an x of 1, you see, if so for all of these values of x, we have points on the graph. 
but we don't have points on the graph for x values that lie out here and x values that lie out there. So the domain would be x values that are between negative 1 and 3. You see now, this little open circle business right here means that this value is not a part of the graph. So, and there are a lot of ways of saying this, but uh, x is between negative 2 and 3. And I could say it like this, negative 2 is less than or equal to x, and x is strictly less than 3. So x is between negative 2 and 3. Now notice that, that uh, uh, x could be equal to negative 2 because of that solid dot right there, but x cannot be equal to 3. x is strictly less than 3, you see, in this circumstance. So that's a way of writing it. Now, uh, the range is kind of a similar, similar idea, except we're kind of looking vertically. It's a, it's, it has to do with y values that are on the graph. You see, so we were thinking in terms of this idea to, to identify domain. For range, we're thinking about how high it is. What vertical distances are involved here uh, on this graph? Well, we go all the way up to 2 for the highest vertical distance, and the lowest vertical distance is all the way down here at negative 3. So the range would be values from 2 to negative 3. You see, so we, we would say then that, let's see, usually these are written with the lowest value first. So negative 3 is strictly less than the y values that are on the graph, and they are less than or equal to 2. So the y values are in this range, and the x values are in this domain range. Okay, that's the idea. Now, Algebraically, you, you think just a little bit differently. It's related to the graphical form, and, and really, you could take the algebraic form, the equation here, and change it into a y equals. So, for example, if I want to find domain and range of this, I could write this as y equals the square root of x minus 2. Construct the graph and use the same technique here to find domain and range. The, the way to do it, though, if we're just looking at the algebraic form, is, is to say, what really are the restrictions on the values of x? What values of x don't make sense for this? You see, and I've, I'm using as examples here two of the classic problems. If you're going to be asked a question about this on the test, it's going to come in one of these two forms. It's either going to be a radical involved or it's going to be a fraction. And the fraction is going to have a variable in the denominator. But if it's, if it's a radical form, then it's something like this. And the idea is that you can only take the square root of positive numbers or zero. So you want to identify the values of x that will cause the radicand to be positive or zero. You see, for what values is this radicand positive or zero? See, if, if x is, is uh, oh, let's say, uh, negative, then a negative number with negative 2 would be negative and that would be disallowed. We can't take the square root of a negative value. So if x is, if x is 2, you see 2 minus 2 is 0, that's okay. And if x is any number bigger than 2, that's okay as well because the radicand will be positive. All right, so, so the domain would be x values that are greater than or equal to 2. Now, that's a way to write it. This is a, a, just a, an inequality. If we were, were writing interval notation, it would be kind of like this. It would be from 2 to infinity. It could be write, written like that. Uh, but I, I kind of doubt it. I believe that the, the test uh, questioners would, would use this kind of, of notation for the domain. Now, the range is a little more elusive when you're looking at an algebraic form. You, you have to ask yourself, what y values, can, what values of, can y take on when we are taking the square roots of numbers that are either positive or zero? What kind of numbers do we get out of that? Well, the square root of 0 is 0, and the square root of positive numbers would be positive numbers. So the range would be y values greater than or equal to 0, it turns out. Now, the graph of this looks like this. You see, and the graph goes out forevermore that, that way. But it's the idea that, that uh, if you constructed the graph, you would get something like this. And so the values of x that are on the graph are values that start at 2 and go out to the right. Here's another question. Let's work some more.